I am the Queen of England. You must give me your lunch money. Why? Because um, it'll explode. I don't know. I'm the Queen of England. I know things. Well, that makes sense. Here you go. Wait, Billy. Just because an authority says it doesn't make it true. Come to Camp Quest Northwest, where you'll learn critical thinking and science in a fun-filled, week-long nature camp. No! Camp Quest Northwest can be found at campquestnorthwest.org. Donations and volunteers accepted. The devil is not real. I'm melting! Playing of bodyguards for the governor of the northern state of Nuevo Leon. Federal Prosecutor's aide says that the men were captured during a traffic stop Saturday. For the latest news and analysis, log on to irnusanews.com. You know, I I wouldn't necessarily call myself a contrarian. I mean, I, I do have a knack for taking on popular positions, but there's one thing that I've taken a bit of crap for lately, and I want to stick up for it. I actually got some, some crap from a common friend of ours, Sam. I, I uh, Tyson laughed at me. Really? Yeah, we were at a party. And here it is. For the record, my favorite superhero is Aquaman. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, hey, <laughs> I, I know all the arguments. Oh, he's useless. And you know what? I think that's crap. Uh, not only can this guy sick, sick uh, uh, shark to puss or giant squid or the creature from the Black Lagoon on you, this is a guy who can survive the pressures of the bottom of the ocean without getting a scratch on him and even out of the water. This is a guy who deals with illegal poachers by throwing polar bears at them. <laughs> he can see in total darkness, he can lift cars, and he can punch through the hull of a submarine. In fact, you know, part of the reason why I, I, I like Aquaman so much is because he gets so much crap. Yeah. I, can, I can relate to a guy who gets scoffed at and made fun of and put down and, and doesn't let him turn him into a jerk. Okay. So, if this still does not convince you that Aquaman is awesome, <laughs> I have one word for you. Kandiru. <laughs> you are listening to Ask an Atheist. 253-584-1480. Are we getting money for that? Or? I, I don't know, but if DC Comics wants to send me a check, you, <laughs> yeah. I would be happy to, to cash it in. You've definitely convinced me there, Mike. I mean, that polar bear thing, that was, that was the... You don't mess nail with the nail in the coffin for me. Yeah. You don't mess with it. So, yeah, Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. My name is Mike Gillis. Joining me in the studio, my fellow Ask an Atheist producer and close friend, Sam Mulvey. Hello, hello. And one of my favorite f human beings, <laughs> aside from Aquaman, <laughs> Kyle Hepworth. Howdy. Also known as the devil in the uh, Billy and the Devil cartoon uh, commercials. Billy! 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 Yes. That's correct. <laughs> Our most popular ad ever. Yeah. Uh, really incredibly. Doing incredibly well so they were fun to make uh so what what was it like when you when uh, well we, we made them in a bathroom mm -hmm. uh with, <laughs> with some great studio equipment it was the quietest room in the house yeah and uh we just kind of ran through them there was they were pretty much all one take it was just the ninth or 20th take each ah, time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> definitely our best commercials normally we do scripture says what this week we're putting that off because there is something more important and that's your feedback indeed so, actually but before that we do have a couple of announcements if oh. i may uh, the first one is we are gift wrapping at the Barnes & Noble at South Center uh, through the month of December. Uh, you can meet your favorite Ask an Atheist people, or maybe just some Ask an Atheist people. I don't know what you like. And, uh, again, this is the the Barnes & Noble at South Center. You can go to our website, askanatheist.tv, to see when we're going to be there. Uh, it's it's uh, you, you, don't, you don't have to pay for the gift wrapping, but since we're doing this as a fundraiser, donations would be appreciated. And uh, even if you're not in the area, you can't make it down to the South Center Barnes & Noble, go to our website website askanatheist.tv we're not going to stop you from making a donation hit the big yellow button on the left side of the screen indeed uh the other announcement we have is again uh, ask an atheist is having another comedy show at the jewel box theater in seattle on december 29th at 8 p.m uh confirmed for the show are kermit apio the uh a hawaiian comic in seattle doing uh, does very well and Ask an Atheist's own Jeremy Whitman. Uh, other acts are to be announced. Again, that's December 29th, 8 p.m. Uh, it'll be at the Jewel Box Theater, and there will be more information about that on the website at askanatheist.tv shortly. Yes, yeah, cool. so uh, how would you gentlemen say we dive right into the Why Ask not? an Atheist mailbag? Indeed. I yeah. got my mailbag. On. Going off with a... Th this is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're starting with Craig from Mississippi. Yes, I can look up IP addresses. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And he has to say, if you think there is any correlation between Harold Camping and true Christianity, then you are as misinformed as he is. Christians around the world were just sitting back and laughing at him with his little band of followers as much as the uninformed, 
atheist, etc., putting a general Christianity in the same camp as camping just makes you sound stupid. He does have quotes around camp. And, yeah, and that's I, cute. Could, could we not? I, we wish we could leave this guy alone. We're kind of done with him, but everybody's got something to say about this. Yeah, just as soon as you get out, they just pull you back in. Yeah. yeah. And Even while walking out with uh, my sandwich board for the rapture relief, whenever it said the end was nigh, mm-hmm. uh, we just people would come up to me and they go like, you know what? I don't believe in that. But no one knows when it will happen. Yeah, they're not saying that the rapture is a silly idea. No, of and course that, not. You know, they're saying, no, the rapture is completely going to happen, and camping is just silly for putting a date on it. Right. We it, agree on everything but the date. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, you have a car, and you've painted, you, you've dipped it in gold, and you've you've swapped out the uh, windshield for, for a diamond, and everybody's like, yeah, well, we all do that. And then you put neon on it, and they go, oh, no, that's too far. That's a bridge too far. <laughs> That's what's, uh, that's what's so funny about this, is the people who get really snappy at it. In the end, those people who are laughing at Harold Camping are laughing at a mainstream Christian belief. Yeah, and when you come right down to it, I, even if you don't believe in in the rapture, every religion, because of the nature of the religion, believes in something, in the nature of religion and humanity, believes in something that other people would find silly. I right. mean, from my perspective, the idea that... that uh, Christians worship this, you know, Jewish dude who had to die, but was also the son of God in order to atone for the sins that God placed upon people just because he could, even though he was completely in control. It all seems a little silly for me. So, you know, the difference between Harold Camping's camp and other people's camp really isn't whether or not you believe in something silly. It's it, or it's what what silly thing you actually believe in. Where the where you draw the line on silly. You know what it reminds yeah. me a little bit of. It reminds me of uh, David Ike and uh, what is the other guy, the Texas guy? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Alex Jones. Alex Jones. So uh, it's it's funny because Alex Jones makes fun of David Ike. They're both conspiracy theorists. They both agree this is the same thing until that last line. Yeah. They both agree that there's a secret group of people that control the world and the media and everything in it. But David Ike goes that one little step further and. Th- Thinks that behind all of that are shape shifting lizard men. <laughs> and, That's crazy. And Alex, yeah. and Alex Jones laughs at him for that, even though up until that last <laughs> sentence they were in total agreement. Yeah, it's and I'm not saying atheism is necessarily an alternative to avoiding crazy beliefs. I have a couple of ideas that people might think are crazy, and there are definitely atheists out there who have some crazy ideas. Conspiracy the- theories being prime among them. Right. How many atheists uh, in like the Ze- zeitgeist movement who also believe the the crazy stuff they say about 9-11 i mean it you just plenty it, yeah plenty unfortunately plenty i mean it doesn't it, we don't have any kind of like unifying book yet. exactly so. it, it doesn't exempt us from crazy beliefs right. it's just we don't have crazy beliefs based on a, a belief in the supernatural <laughs> right Right. So, I mean, this was, I guess this was sort of the the negative side of uh, uh, getting e- email from the religious, but we, we have something better, don't we? Yeah, we, we have a, a much nicer version. This is from Bree from Winnipeg, Canada. It says, I'm a progressive Christian who constantly struggles with the, between the tensions between my faith and my brain. So, thank you so much for your podcast. Though, obviously, I don't totally agree with atheism, I find your show very thought-provoking and love how it pokes at the ridiculous ridiculous of faith culture. <laughs> I'm especially thankful for the religion and abuse topic, which was discussed. Such a, an important topic that nobody ever talks about. Definitely a vital issue. Too bad religious types aren't talking about it. Many thanks. Keep up the good work. I, Thank you. Yeah, uh, okay. That's well, great. Kind That's of a great. palate cleanser from the last one. And to me, this is, this is a message to me that we're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, I would say, Bree, don't be afraid of that struggle between your brain and your faith. Let your brain go where it will and figure this out for your own. Don't, don't ex- we're not going to tell you what to believe, yeah. but uh, don't be afraid of your brain doing what it does. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that, that is what it comes down to. Yeah. Also, you know, thank you for that. Religion and abuse is something that it, I'm not going to say that it's not talked about, but it's definitely not talked about enough. It's usually only talked about in the context of Catholic priest abuse. But really, the abuse in religion goes way beyond merely the clergy of one specific branch. And this is something that really does need to be talked about. It, And we're going to talk about it a little bit more today, and we're going to revisit this issue probably a couple times through the course of Ask an Atheist. 
Absolutely. I think we can get one more in before we go to a break. Oh, okay. And uh, this is from George from Baker City, Oregon. And he says, I've heard that uh, one may not be able to choose their belief or lack of belief. So I'm a little confused on this. So if you guys think belief is not a choice, then can you explain why? Yeah. Yeah. George, uh, belief is not a choice. Okay. So even if I am convinced otherwise, if I'm convinced that Christianity is true today, I didn't make a choice. Someone convinced me and then I had to go with what I felt, mm. you know, it's, it's not like I'm sitting down and going like, I want to believe this. So I'm going to make myself believe that. Yeah. It, the idea that choice happens absent ev- evidence or absent anything else, that choice is made in a vacuum is something that you get from theists a lot. And what I like to say is that there's a difference between a choice and a decision. A choice is, you know, I walk into the supermarket and I choose to have a frozen pizza rather than cooking something nice. Mm-hmm. I walk, uh, you know, I walk into my uh, my TV room and I decide to watch a Mike episode rather than a Joel episode. A decision is based on evidence, or I, you know, this is a this is a sort of a device or division that I make for myself. But just be just because I'm making a decision based on the evidence doesn't mean I'm making a choice based merely on opinion that when you're making it when you're trying to figure out how the world works it's necessary to look at what is true and what is not and the way we determine what is true and what is not is by looking at the evidence what is testable what is falsifiable you know basically through the scientific method absolutely i i tend to think that uh, belief is a lot like laughter it's there's an involuntary nature to it somebody makes an argument you either agree or you don't and uh you can use apologetics and other stuff to try to fool yourself but in the end it's that struggle that tells you there's something wrong and something inconsistent about the things that you believe you're listening to ask an atheist 253-584-1480 we're going to take a quick break we'll come back with more of your emails don't believe in god join the club Humanists, atheists, and freethinkers have joined the American Humanist Association since 1941 to advocate for progressive values and equality for non-theists in America. Located in Washington, D.C., the American Humanist Association lobbies Congress on humanist issues, protects the rights of atheists in the courts, and supports more than 140 local chapters. Visit us at AmericanHumanist.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter to learn how you can join the club today. I am a Nigerian prince, and I want to hide a bajillion dollars in your locker. Wow! A bajillion dollars? All I need is your lunch money. (laughs) What a great deal! Here you go! Wait, Billy! Just because you want to believe something doesn't mean you should. Come to Camp Quest Northwest, where you'll learn critical thinking and science in a fun-filled, week-long nature camp. No! Camp Quest Northwest can be found at campquestnorthwest.org. Donations and volunteers accepted. The devil is not real. Did you know that not a single psychic or paranormal event has ever been reproduced? Have you ever wondered about the effectiveness of faith healing, Reiki, or sports bracelets? Was 9-11 an inside job, or is that all just another unproven conspiracy theory? Come check out the Seattle Skeptics, a group focused on lively debates and a critical examination of pseudoscience, alternative medicine, and anything else that hasn't held up to the light of the scientific method. Seattle Skeptics was created for those who require a high a bar of evidence than gut feelings or blind belief. We're not contrarians or cynics, we just want to see the evidence. And so should you. Check us out at seattleskeptics.org. That's seattleskeptics.org. If you enjoy the programming we create here on Ask an Atheist, please make a contribution with us. Your sponsorship helps keep our show on the air and improve the quality of our broadcasts. Donors get access to exclusive Ask an Atheist content. Don't make us beg. Please go to askanatheist.tv and contribute today. And we are back. You're listening to Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. And today we are diving right into the Ask an Atheist email bag. That was a conjugation. <laughs> that was good. And uh, well seeing what you folks have to say, uh, we have the next one. This comes from Cravillo, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, from the Bible Belt. And he has this to oh, say. Yeah. Oh, yes. A friend of mine just recently revealed to me, among other friends that she has for a long time now, been seeing what she calls ghosts and energies. After inquiring about about it, she seems to be having experiences that could be described as psychic delusions. This includes seeing spiritual warfare, ghosts, energy ores around her, and even seeing thoughts. Also, if it turns out to be something possibly detrimental to her health, I don't know how I would convince her 
or anybody around her of that. Uh, she sees this as a gift of the Spirit. She's told her parish priest about it a long time ago, who has also told her that it's a gift. On top of that, she lives in a tight Bible belt, so it seems it would be impossible to try to convince anybody she might need medical help to get rid of a so-called gift from the divine. Thank you for any help you can give. Yeah. That's a rough one. I don't even know what to say about this, honestly. Really? Yeah. There's there's a few I think there's a few tactics you could take. Um if you're honestly concerned for the health of your friend, hmm. you could say, you know, I'm having difficulty believing that this is a gift of the spirit because it it sounds like you know, basically put some evidence together and say it sounds like you might be suffering from schizophrenia or something like that. And I'd say in this case, aiming a little high might be part of it to suggest to her that uh Maybe she get an EKG or something like that to make sure that she's not un- undergoing some sort of uh, seizure. But, I'm, not, I'm not certain that an EKG is what you need there. I'm not a medical professional by any means. Right, but isn't it possible that she's just not going to listen? I mean, yeah, it's I, possible. I would think it would be greatly possible. It, I think it's it's given the circumstances, yeah. it's really likely that she's not going to listen. But if this is somebody you're really really concerned about, that right. would be one tactic you could take. Is if you want to convince me, show me that there's not a medical cause for what you're uh, for what you're experiencing. The other side of that is. It's entirely clearly it's entirely possible that it doesn't have a medical cause, but still isn't real because it's it just, it's delusional. It's in the it software. Could, yeah, it could be made up. It, it's a hard thing when I when I see something like this because on one level you when you see your friend going through something that could be mental illness, and their mental illness can be something that they can interpret as a a religious belief. It's hard to get them to get help, and there becomes this real question of at what point do you intervene? Is there a certain point where you just acknowledge there's nothing you can do? Because I can imagine if you have a friend who's an alcoholic, uh, there's a certain point where you can only cut your ties and 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 sort of save yourself from getting pulled down into this. Yeah. And sadly, sometimes people only get help after these things completely fall apart. The other thing I can think of is if you're trying to be to, to stage an intervention, and this is a cheap hack. I'll, I'll be honest with you, this this one's kind of cheap. Is on my during my time in the New Age movement, which was sort of one of the way stations I visited. At uh, on my way to atheism is, uh, and I talk about this a lot on my episode of Living After Faith. But one of the things that a lot of my friends in the New Age movement believed in was seeing ghosts, energy, auras, past lives through visualization and stuff like that. That, that sounds very almost exactly like the way uh, Cravillo is describing uh, what his friend his friend is seeing, his or her friend is seeing. And uh, you know, I might say, look, you know. Are you certain that what you're seeing is this this Christian thing? Are you this this is coming straight from the New Age movement? Are you sure this is the way you want to be? Are you sure that what you're and unfortunately your friend is likely going to say, well then it's the devil. Right. Mm-hmm. Where where you could say is maybe you just really want something. Maybe you're wishing really hard for something to be there right. when it isn't. I wouldn't really suggest it, but. It's what occurs. I mean, it may not necessarily be uh, mental illness. It could just be wishful thinking. It's, it's yeah. really hard to say that when when a mental illness does seem to coincide with a mainstream belief, it's harder to diagnose certain things. In some ways, religion can actually be a shield against a diagnosis that yeah. they may not actually seek well, one out. Right. But I, I think the the thing that's a little nervous is that the other thing is that the parish priest, as she mentions, that person is also re, kind of reestablishing and, and strengthening this person's delusion. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a little scary, too, uh, because it, it normally, this is the thing that Rich talked about when he said, if you have somebody who thinks that they're hearing God's voice, and he said, their crazy has to match my crazy, well, we're in a scenario where the crazies are matching up here. Right. Do, is- do we have to wait until they do get violent yeah. before somebody sees it? That, I mean, it may not. I, I want to. I want to say that. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be mental illness or a medical disease. Like I, I have a. I, I still have friends in the New Age movement. They still believe in that they see these things. I don't really classify them as mentally ill. I do think it's wishful thinking. There's even possibly medical causes for stuff like this. For example, personally, I get really bad after images in my eyes. Like, uh, you know, when you look at something too long, you look away and it's still there. Right. And if I'm looking, if I'm spending a day out in the sun that night. There's going to be like it's going to look like a weird fractal fractal thing for a few hours in my eyes. It's just always going to be there. And my new age friends actually did convince me for a little while that that was a gift from the spirits. And then I was like, wait a minute, no, this is clearly a medical thing. This is this is clearly this is clearly just my bad eyes. You know, it doesn't sound like much of a gift either. Yeah. It sounds really annoying. Yeah. It's incredible. Partial annoying. blindness. Yeah, that's your gift right there, buddy. <laughs> Congratulations! You live in a really hot, arid, uh, bright state, and you can't go to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is Arizona. I, I can't. It's bright all the time. You know. It's. <laughs> 
So yeah, our next one comes from Josh from the internet. Oh, hello. Uh, he asked a, a question about William Lane Craig. He asks, I was just wondering if you could debunk these arguments as I try to deconvert. Additionally, could you debunk James White and Dr. Peter Williams? And he actually lists out all of these apologetic arguments. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to debunk them by name. I I think ultimately over the course of Ask an Atheist, it's likely that we're going to do that. I've I've been here for for a couple of these. I believe Bob tackled the Kalam cosmological argument. Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to revisit that. But um, you shouldn't be using us as a single source for your debunking arguments, really. (laughs) Because, yeah, I personally can't debunk any of them because I just haven't studied it. You know, different people respond to different arguments, and this line of reasoning is really interested to me. I'm not as familiar with the the technical names for a lot of these things, like, oh, first cause. I mean, I know what these things mean. Mm -hmm. But the the truth is that these things are well covered all over the Internet, and you were able to type them into the email to us. So just type them into Google (laughs) and look up criticisms of, and you'll find so many people who are going to be able to address this in a much more comprehensive way than we are. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that you want to sort of debunk, but we're not going to we're not going to teach you what to believe. Um, I would say just simply look for evidence, look for stuff that's independently verifiable, falsifiable, like Sam said, and um, and just explore. And uh, in, in the end, my big problem with all of these arguments harkens back to something we had talked about very early on in one of our episodes called How to Change Our Mind, which is that at the end, how to change our mind is to provide evidence, and that's something that none of these arguments do. Right. They try to argue a god into existence uh, through using rhetorical tricks and riddles and puzzles rather than actually showing you the footprint, the thumbprint, the DNA, whatever, whatever it takes to prove this god exists, and that's that's what it takes. And, you know, uh, as we said... Any episode with Bob on it, this is one of the things that Bob likes to do, yeah, uh, yeah. and that, that he's sort of our resident expert on that. So you can uh, watch the episodes he's been on, or listen to the episodes he's been on. Uh, any episode that he's going to be on in the future, we're likely going to talk about this. So I think eventually we'll get around there, but I think to ask us to debunk the all of the uh, apologetics arguments of several major... Uh, <laughs> external argu- uh, apologist thinkers is a little bit much to ask in the course of one email. So yeah, if you're looking for specific refutations, as Mike says, uh, look at Google. Otherwise, uh, we'll get there eventually. I think let's... Uh, oh yes, uh, Bob's... Uh, you oh, can yeah. probably check out Galileo Unchained is the name of Bob's uh, blog. Yeah. It's really, really good. Uh, Bob's a, always a great resource for counter-apologetics. And, and for those who don't remember what apologetics is, that is the way that people come up with these little tricks to fool themselves and to keep believing when the regular beliefs, the regular reasons, just ain't working. So that's the point in which belief actually does become a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same way you're like, oh, oh you know, I, it, you try to convince yourself to believe something. You're not really being convinced. So when you're heavy breathing, apologetics? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this next one comes from Bill from Anchorage, and he he wants to talk about workplace atheism. Um, Unlike some of you, I make my atheism known to all. My license plate says M. Pious. Huh? Uh, Christians here tend to have variations of religious messages on their plates, so I'm always ready to debate them. The funny thing is that only one person I knew knew what it meant. I've gone as far as to park really close to the front door of local churches on Sunday mornings and find it's ignored. As for my coworkers, they are too are fully aware of my belief. Only two guys debate me seriously. As you know, you can't get indoctrinated to see the reason. That's from Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, don't be a jerk. I mean, Ow. <laughs> I mean, it, not necessarily directly towards you, but that's that's a that's a motto that you should live your life by. Don't be a jerk. And whenever you're a nice guy and you're angry, then you become a passionate nice guy. Yeah. And whenever you start out as kind of like in a confrontational guy, and then you become angry on top of that, well, that kind of makes a jerk. I, I think it's important in the atheist movement that we make it clear that we're not. You know, that we're not out there to just get in people's faces. So the reason the atheism visibility movement exists and the reason we call it the atheism visibility movement is because we want a seat at the table. We want to be able to to freely be atheists, to freely live uh, lives free of superstition and uh, and to be able to talk about it freely without having to worry about it. That doesn't necessarily mean you have the right to get in people's faces. Uh, you were talking... I mean, you have the right, but you just shouldn't. It, it makes should. you look like a right. jerk, yeah. again. That's a big quick. Is that, like you said, we put our stuff out there. Richard Dawkins writes a book, and you can find it in bookstores. Uh, Christopher Hitchens gives a lecture. 
puts his stuff out there. You can choose to attend or not attend. Richard Dawkins isn't going door to door to tell you that you're wrong. He's not provocatively parking his offensive bumper sticker in front of your church hoping to get a reaction. That's very different. And I think one of the things I like about the atheist visibility movement versus a lot of religious movements that is that we don't go door to door and proactively bother individual believers yeah. you have to come to us to respond and have that discussion it's you, voluntary you were talking about this before we went on is is this is this is sort of the uh visual version or the the atheist version of going around looking for a fight yeah you know you're you're not going to throw the first punch but you're you're there to hope somebody punches you that doesn't put you on the same moral ground as the person who throws the first punch but it's really close and i'm not saying don't get mad i'm not saying no absolutely don't let things get to you i'm not saying don't ever communicate anger just just sit there and take it as you will find out later in the hour there is clearly a time when you need to talk about things that are bothering you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it really comes down to, like I said, I had, I had a friend who would do this sometimes, and it doesn't mean that they picked the fight if you're the one trying to provoke them into throwing the first punch. It yeah, doesn't, yeah. It doesn't, it's not like Grand Theft Auto 4, where the cop arrests the aggressor. Mm. Um, it's... It's it's just not morally sustainable. So we have another one. George from Baker City says, "I'm get a particular argument I'm getting from a from theists that the evidence for God is the sky, the ocean, the land, the grass, the mountains, the apple trees, and grapevines." How would you reply to this? How would I reply to this? The uh. the cholera, the harlequinic theosis, the cancer, the uh, yeah, well, that's the other the part. Stillborn, the stillborn, the tuberculosis, the starvation. No, but uh, I think I think we get this a lot. This, yeah. Whenever I'm tabling at a booth or anything like that, um, this is the one that I, that always comes up. Is mm-hmm. why don't you just look around and that's the proof for God, right there, and. I don't know. I look around pretty frequently, and I still don't believe. Yeah. Yeah, people have a tendency to, to pick all the things that they believe are pretty. And again, this is just your opinion. There are some people who think that cancer is pretty or that the naked mole rat is pretty. And, um, you know, again, it's like God created everything according to your theology, including the nasty, ugly things, including the things that are like that one breed of worm that... Uh, you know, when it when it gives birth, actually has to burrow out of another living animal. I forget yeah. what its name is. I think that's cool. That's cool, but it's <laughs> it's it's not particularly nice. Mm-hmm. So you know, you gotta again. What is that? That uh, the tree, the grass, the land, the mountains, the apple trees. That's evidence of the last the, the, of the land, the grass, the mountains, the apple trees, and the grapevines. Yeah, we've established that they exist. I'm and, not going to assume anything because of that. And just because there are things in the universe that you like does not necessarily mean that. Uh, Again, that you have to worship a zombie Jew who is also God and his dad. And, yeah, you know. (laughs) That's the big jump with a lot of those apologetic arguments is that they go immediately from, uh, I prove this first cause, even if those things worked. Yeah. Even if uh, everything that William Lane Craig said was absolutely correct about those first cause type arguments for the existence of a deity, you can't jump immediately from there than saying, oh, it's this specific deity worshipped by this specific people at this specific time. Right. Right. God does not equal Christian God. Therefore, everything uh, bad in the world, you're going to hell um, unless because a woman ate a piece of fruit once, and the only way to save it is for God to sacrifice Himself to Himself to break a rule He broke Himself. You know, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, or you know, just not so we're picking on one religion today. That <laughs> there's one God that demands that every living creature be its slave. It's like, yeah, why bother? Again, this gets down to the the thing that I really dislike about Christianity is this, and again, you'll hear the things say, "Oh, this unmerited grace that you've given." I was talking about Islam, actually. Oh, Islam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, again, they tend to plead together because in the end, they say, <laughs> "I love you, love me back, or I'm going to hurt you forever." Fair enough. Fair enough. Why? Thank you. What a gracious offer. <laughs> and it's when somebody says, oh, isn't it wonderful that Jesus made this sacrifice for you? He was dead for three days. Yeah, that's a really... I mean, I don't want to be beaten to death, but yeah. if we're going to talk about sacrifices, Prometheus of the Titans, that's far worse. He brought fire down from the heavens, stole it from the gods, and gave it for humanity. You know what his punishment was? He got served out by crows every day. Every day. And then yeah. he would heal, and the, the crows would rip his guts out again. Yeah. Forever. That's not like I had a... As, as Rich refers to it, Jesus had a bad weekend. <laughs> And after that, 
He's the, the sacrifice like doesn't continue. Stuff. He's God now. That's a promotion, not a sacrifice. You gotta wonder, like, if uh, you were suffering the guts being ripped out by crows every day. Do you get that done early in the morning so you just get it out of the way right away and you got the rest of your day? Or really, what are you gonna do with the rest of your day if your guts have been ripped out by crows? I mean, well, you try not to trip over your guts. Yeah, yeah, but it's. I mean, it's really hard to do light typing when your intestines are everywhere. I, you know, it's uh, not really good for your employment prospects when you're. Con- Consistently losing your organs. Yeah, it's it again. It comes down to love me back, or I'll hurt you forever. Oh, he did this wonderful thing for you. Yes, he gave me an ultimatum. A guy says, "Oh, this wonderful choice." When somebody pulls a gun and says, "Give me your wallet, or I'll shoot you." Yeah. What a wonderful choice you gave me. That's that's <laughs> not a choice when there's you know eternal flames forever after that. So you think we got time for one more? I think we got time for me. No, I think we don't. Oh, really? <laughs> I think we're coming right up on that break, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we can either just go no. no. Oh. As the answer to your question, whether it's pertinent or not. All right. So uh, we're going to jump to a quick break for two minutes, and then there is something we really got to get off our chest. You're listening to Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. Get ready for the fur to fly, ladies and gentlemen. See you in two minutes. Join the folks at Dorky's Arcade on December 3rd for Noise for Toys to benefit Pierce County's Toys for Tots. This all-ages event will feature activities for the whole family, an air hockey tournament, an ugly sweater contest, and a raffle for prizes. As always, there will be a massive wall of pinball machines and retro arcade games on hand and some of the best sandwiches and pizza in Tacoma. There will be musical performances by Phantom Twin, Oven Rake, Cinnabot, McFire Drill, and Square Whale. That's December 3rd from 6 until 11 at Dorky's Arcade on the corner of 9th and Pacific in downtown Tacoma. The Humanists of Washington is the oldest humanist organization in the state and offers a community of free thinkers who educate the public and celebrate life. Come celebrate life with us. Humanists support intellectual freedom and critical thinking and hold that human beings are autonomous centers of moral development. You can become a member of the Humanists of Washington at humanistsofwashington.org. You'll get our quarterly publication, The Secular Humanist Press. Check out meetup.com where you can be part of our monthly Seattle dinner and our Heathens Do It Better breakfast. Humanists of Washington. Tacoma Telematics wants to help you connect with your clients. We can give you a top-notch web presence. Tacoma Telematics can take your website to the next level and make it an essential part of your business marketing. But that's not all. Want VoIP? We've got it. Bringing large corporation phone systems capability at mom-and-pop prices. We build intuitive interfaces to help you manage your resources quickly and efficiently. Take advantage of our holistic approach to make your business communication succeed effortlessly. At Tacoma Telematics, we're committed to personal and professional integrity, open communication, and long-term relationships. See us at TacomaTelematics.com. Sigmund Freud said, the voice of the intellect is a soft one, but it does not rest until it has gained a hearing. Whether you're at a point in life where you are questioning your beliefs or if you've always been an atheist or agnostic, the Auburn Free Thought Society is a place where your own voice of intellect will be heard. You'll interact with like-minded people, engage in intellectual conversation, and share your experiences with others in the Auburn, Washington area. At Auburn Free Thought Society, we encourage critical thought and reason. For details, find us on Facebook Book it on meetup.com. Auburn Free Thought Society. Have real discussion and share real ideas freely. You can advertise on Ask an Atheist on the radio, on our website, and in our podcast. People just like you who have the same interests are listening right now, just like you are. And thousands will download this podcast and listen to it later. If you have a product, service, or idea to sell, people here in the Pacific Northwest and people around the world, thousands will hear your message. Let us help you sell your product, service, or idea. Contact us at advertising at askanatheist.tv. That's advertising at askanatheist.tv. And we are back. Uh, you're listening to Ask an Atheist, 253-584-1480. And uh, as I was saying before we went to that last break, we have at Ask an Atheist have a little bit of something we want to get off our oh, chest. Oh, boy, do we. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's been a new development. And I just want to say ahead of time, this is something we normally do not talk about. We don't talk about 
other shows on the same station as us. It's not so much that we have this idea of non-engagement. We just think it's important that we talk about more important things. There's not plenty just, of stuff to talk about on the show as it is. Yeah, not just what's going on in our backyard. But it's now, it's really hit a point where we really do have to start talking about it. Yeah, a line was crossed, and a response is necessary. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who may listen to us on the radio or catch our live stream online, you know that our show is followed by a religious program. It's called The Last Word, and it's hosted by an actual self-righteous pearl-clutching church lady uh, <laughs> who goes by the name of A.K. Adams. Um, if I had to describe this show, I would say it'd be a college course in bad arguments. Basically, yeah. Uh, basically, she, she clucks about Jesus, and it isn't just that, because that wouldn't be worth mentioning, because there's thousands of shows that do that. What, what makes this one different is that it's transparently a response to our show. Yeah, I mean, seven satellites broadcasting Christian programming 24 hours a day, seven days a week, directly into our heads, isn't enough to counter the one hour of commercial programming that Ask an Atheist has per week. There has to be a direct response. It absolutely cannot be, you know, just her, uh, just us. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just nuts. It's that 99% market share just isn't enough for you. Especially Our, on that, Sunday. Yeah. Especially on Sunday. You can't let the one out of a thousand atheist radio shows. There's, there's one atheist radio show up against 99%. Christian programming, not just on this network, but like Sam said, 24-hour networks on multiple stations. And it just wasn't enough that we could let our opinion go without answer. So, <laughs> But the thing you have to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, this isn't her idea. The show, the one, show is called The Last Word, i.e. as the last word after we talk. But It's pretty transparent. Yeah. Her, she did not choose that time period. Oh, she won't shut up about this point. Oh, yeah. She didn't Every choose week. it. God did. God chose it. God chose this time slot. She wanted a later time slot. And if you listen to about just about any episode of her show, she will let you know that she doesn't actually have to have any responsibility for her choice on this Yeah, I, I like to reference Susan B. Anthony on this one. And I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do, because I notice it always coincides with their own desires. And this is clearly what's <laughs> happening here. This is... Uh, she can't. She cannot let our arguments go unrespond, unresponded to. So she has to come in here, and if you have a problem with it, take it with the man upstairs. Well, as atheists, we don't believe in the man upstairs, so it falls on her. And it's it, honestly this idea that we can't have any argument without an immediate response from a Christian is one of the most incredibly puerile ideas I've ever encountered. I, I can't imagine a more beautiful example of Christian privilege than this, is that she feels like she's actually under attack that somebody else who disagrees with her on this one issue has is allowed voice. to... Yes, yeah, has, has a voice at, all. voice at all. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing. is It's still, at this point, we're thrilled about this. We're, we were thrilled at the idea that we apparently had this much of an impact that our show is being heard by somebody on the other end of this debate yeah. who felt threatened by it. So, in, in, in effect... On that sense, we're doing something right. The, the first time the last word happened, you were practically, I mean, you were jumping for joy and dancing in the parking lot of the radio stations. Like, we got somebody's it's attention. It's like being on the billboard charts. Yeah. Yeah, not only did it, did it get her attention, but it's become a bit of a, I guess you could say a tradition with the crew of Ask an Atheist is that as soon as our live show ends and her live show is about to begin, during that changing of the guard moment, we pile all down to the parking lot, pop on the radio, and listen to what essentially is her responding to the things that we said. And yeah. even now, this isn't something that's worthy of a response on her show. But a couple of weeks ago, there was a, there was a line that was crossed, and we'll talk about that just in a little bit. And I think it's, it's worth... Let's, let's play a clip of a, a general idea of the sort of thing that she says on our show. We're talking about, like, apologetic so bad... <laughs> that she makes Ray Comfort look like Bertrand Russell. <laughs> okay, here we go. And the man did not even know of the existence of a galaxy or galaxies or universe or universes. Matter of fact, didn't even know about realms. Hey, <laughs> realm? Realms? Realms. Are we, are we talking about Narnia here? <laughs> Thor, I think. Thor. Asgard? Yeah, and she's talking about realms like it's some scientific thing. I, I, I have no idea what she's talking about. Has Hubble taken a picture of a realm? Yeah, I don't I think mean, so. I guess she's right in that. I, I don't know about the existence of realms. Yeah. It's true. Okay. <laughs> he did not have that knowledge. The question comes, where did knowledge come from? Amen. Well, according to the word of God, God saw, uh, spoke, he, God said, 
let there be. And not only did he create a man, this planet, we call Earth, but he created everything in, on, around, including the waters, everything in the waters, the deep. And no one, but no one can disprove that. Now I know there are those who want to call it the Big Bang, but you know, there had to be a beginning for the Big Bang. Where did all the uh, substances, the elements, come from to cause the Big Bang? And if God utilized the Big Bang, then so be it. Well, one thing is for certain, man was not in the equation. For if man was in the equation, then he would have the answers. But man does not have the answers. As a matter of fact, and this is one of my... Yeah, so that's, I mean, okay, where do I start? First, uh, nobody is saying that man was around during the Big Bang. Two, uh, you know, where, where were these waters if there was nothing? Three, I, I, this is, we, we answer this question right. every day. Every single day. It's if, if uh, God doesn't need to have someone to make him, why does the Big Bang need someone to have him? Yeah, it, it's not just... Um, the problem of infinite regress. That, absolutely. Oh, this needs a start. This needs a beginning. Well, then that needs a beginning. And but immediately even, as you, you say, well, this doesn't need a beginning, then you've disproven your Even first beyond point. that, though, even beyond that, it, what it is is, well, there uh, clear, clearly must be a prime cause for the Big Bang. Therefore, you must believe in a zombie Jew. And yeah. that is the son of God. <laughs> you know, is that there's this just, it's this. All gods equal Christian God. Yeah, there was a, there was a cause, there was a prime cause, there was a, then, then something happened, and that means you must believe in the Christian God. You know, I, I'm more likely to believe in, in the Zoroastrian God. I'd, I'd rather be a, a Zoroastrianista. How do you, I don't know. So nasty and naughty? I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, you know, the, it seems more, that would be more likely than this Christian God. So, yeah, that, this is a good example of the sort of, you know, just mind numbingly, it's but now it's nearly unlistenable. Honestly. Yeah, it's 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 bad, and I think it's worth mentioning also that uh, we've edited a lot of these clips down for time. That she has Shatnerian <laughs> ability to do these lengthy pauses because she likes to ad lib her sentences. She That's starts true. it's yeah. like scatting; she doesn't know where it's going to go <laughs> until she ends it and puts a period on the end. Yeah. Um, Amen. But again, <laughs> oh man, uh, this this again isn't the reason that we're here today. This this is still funny. This is something we find amusing. But she finally said something that wasn't funny. Yeah, and and uh, if it was just bad arguments and entertainment, we would have left it alone. It, there still wouldn't be a need for a response. No, there really isn't. It's it's just another silly bad argument Christian show. Right. That's like, oh wow, you know, I, I saw it rain outside and the ground got wet. I need to respond to this on our radio show. No, <laughs> you can throw a stick in any direction and hit a dumb Christian well, show. The episode we're talking about was what three weeks ago now? The religion and abuse episode. Yeah, we we did an episode uh, about three weeks ago now. It was a deeply personal show about religion and abuse, and um, she made some really ignorant and offensive comments in response to that episode. We had our our good friend and and uh, guest uh, Jerry Schiffelbein. Yeah. If you don't know Jerry, he's been on our show a couple times. He's a huge Star Trek fan. He is on <laughs> the board of more atheist organizations than any one person. I All of them, I believe. All of the atheist organizations in the entire world yeah. is on the board. I mean, I do call him the hardest working man in atheism for a reason. I mean, he really does work. He goes out of his way to be helpful. I love Jerry to death. Yeah. And um, he went into a really personal story. He had an upbringing that can only be called torturous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jerry was was abused by his father to such a degree that his brother's leg had to be amputated. Yeah. Um, this is somebody who, who beat his children knowing, that, I mean, believing that if he didn't beat these children, that, that they would go to hell. And it needs to be said to that he was specifically beating them for the cause of religion. Right. It wasn't, he wasn't using religion to justify the beating. Religion was the prime cause of this beating. Is, is he, needed to, he needed to basically torture these children to ensure their religious purity. He, yeah. he was afraid of divine retribution if he did not yeah. abuse his kids. Absolutely. Right. And she... She's responding directly to this episode in yeah. particular. Yeah, and so this was an episode that occurred about three weeks ago, and this is the kind of stuff that she said. You know, Paul, who was very abusive, not malicious, not malicious, because the things that Paul did, St. Paul, he did it thinking he was doing the work of God. 
And yes, beloved, that's called religiosity. Then religiosity sucks. Right. All right, yeah. here's the problem, because according to her logic, uh, the Crusades are okay. Al-Qaeda is okay. Jim Jones is okay. Uh, abortion clinic bombers. Abortion clinic mar- uh, bombers are okay. Marshall Applewhite is okay. As long as you're doing it in the cause of religion, you're allowed. And it doesn't matter if you're right or not. As long as you're doing it for religious purposes, you get a free pass. How does that even work? It doesn't. It How does that make you a good person? How does that make you... It's pretty much the opposite of being a good person. Yeah, I, even, even by her own theology, that's a bad idea. That makes her, that does, that makes her a bad Christian. She's, and this is something that we've encountered a lot with, with her. We, we've had very few actual encounters with her in the, yeah. in the changing of the guard moments. But um, the stuff that we've seen on her show, I, I really get the impression that this is somebody who uses religion as a shield from having to look at her own behavior and the way that she treats people. Yeah. Um, now, clearly, she makes it very clear that she's using religion as sort of protection against abuse in her own life. And I can't challenge that, and I can't even really critique that. But now she's she's taken this protection that she's gotten from religion, and she's weaponized it. She's right. now she's now using it to attack other victims of abuse. And that's where she and I part ways. This is where I stop thinking she's a nice person. And she's also taking a, she's taking the responsibility of Jerry's father away from the abuse that he inflicted on his children. Yeah, he's 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 basically saying that oh well he he had the best he had the best method you know he he had a bad method he was doing something bad but you know he was he meant the right thing he was trying to do God's work yeah. yeah and the fact that the rest of her arguments and the, by the way this is just the beginning yeah they it get gets worse they get so much worse for example yep. You don't have to imagine what life would be like without forgiveness. For those of you that were listening previously, you you heard for yourself. You could feel for yourself anguish, hurt, anger, uh, bewilderment, many other adjectives. That's a noun. Many other verbs. Still a noun. Amen. When you don't receive forgiveness, when you don't give forgiveness, you're actually living in your own man-made hell now here she's kind of right if you don't move on from things that have happened to you if you don't build right. it, it it will eat you up inside and she uses a cancer metaphor and that's a metaphor i tend to agree I with. i mean everybody agrees with this one yeah i think whenever you hold things in it's going to come out in other ways right the the part where i do part ways and that's not even coming with what she's about to say okay is that not once during her entire mindless tirade does she ever seem to actually blame Jerry's father for the abuse? Yeah. He's just this vessel. And but I, it, but it, that's more general to the whole argument. I'm specifically talking to the idea that if you don't oh, move on, it will eat you up inside. And that makes sense to that, me. I, I absolutely, you're true on that. But and, it continues. And then... Amen. Amen. That's right. And it will never go away unless you receive the gift of God. And that gift is forgiveness. Amen. 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 Nope. It's it's nothing about you. Nope. There's nothing you can do. There's no way you can heal yourself. You must go to the source of your abuse for forgiveness. You must be forgiven for the abuse that you received. I'm sorry I got hit, God. Yeah. And, and this is the thing. Why is she talking about forgiveness? Because in the discussion that we had with Jerry, Jerry mentioned that he didn't go to his father's funeral, that he didn't forgive his father. He's moved on. Right. Seems pretty reasonable to me. You don't have to forgive somebody to move on. Forgiveness... That's a response to somebody being sorry. Yeah. Right. That is not a response that you just, you don't just give somebody something, you know, oh, you move on. You, you make it not a focus of your life anymore. You don't let that person continue to hurt you after the fact. Yeah. But you if, don't have to forgive them. Right. If they never say you're so, that they're sorry, they don't get forg- forgiveness. That's how it works. Yeah. There are other ways to achieve this moving on point other than forgiveness. And Jerry is one of those people who has clearly done that. Jerry has every right to, to not every right, but there, we, would, we wouldn't be surprised as a society if Jerry didn't turn out as even tempered as he did. Right. I, I, I could ask, see, honestly see myself having Jerry's childhood yeah. and growing up to be a murderer. Right. Somebody who's in prison, somebody who robs people, somebody, somebody who's been hurt that badly and scarred in the way that Jerry has. It is shocking. It is utterly shocking that he's as well-adjusted, kind, thoughtful, and friendly as he is. Not if you take the word forgiveness out of it. Jerry is somebody who is complete, who has clearly done 
what A.K. Adams is talking about in the first part of that quote. And what's the magic thing that she doesn't seem to be able to accept that he's moved on? Now, what is that? That he's not religious. Right? Exactly. Right. That, oh, no, by the way, the only way for you to fully move on is to believe that the magic Jew, who you can now eat in cracker form, died on two pieces of wood. Yeah. And... Uh, this is a bunch of garbage. That unless you have my specific religion, your abuse is going to stay with you forever. It's like this threat, this hanging sort of Damocles that you, oh, it's going to hurt you. It's going to continue to hurt you unless you have my religion. You know what? That is, that is the most offensive, disgusting thing you can say to somebody, especially <laughs> someone as a fellow abuse survivor yeah. and somebody who's had abuse as horrible as Jerry. I honestly think A.K. Adams owes him and her audience an apology for saying something I like that. I think so, too. Yeah. 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 I, I it it it's really it's one of the things that we like to say is that religious people have a better morality than their book. In the case of of AK Adams, I'm not exactly certain because in the course in a 6-week course that we've been listening to her show, she's blamed the abuser for abuse or no, the abused for abuse, not the abuser. And she's also tried to defend slavery in the Bible. Yeah, that's a kinder, gentler way of owning a human being, getting free labor from them, being able to beat them and sell them as property. Yeah. Oh, okay, apparently you, oh, we were just reading that one wrong. Seems yeah. to have the exact same morality as the Bible, which yeah. is a bad idea, honestly. Yeah. Where do you go from there? I, I mean, how do you claim to be moral when you're talking about when you're blaming the abused and you're saying owning a person is okay, according to the Bible? I, it's it's offensive, and, and I think we, we really need to... To really understand why we're so angry about this, you really need to know something about Jerry. Yeah, and, and to that, I think to, to really give it, to, to put it in its proper place, we need to listen to a part of our show where Jerry is introduced, and then her response to that part later. So first, here is, uh, here is Rich introducing Jerry in our last ep in an episode from two weeks ago, Religion and Abuse. What I'd like to do is first just kind of introduce Jerry a little bit. Jerry is one of the first atheist people I ever met, and I've got... Uh, he is just totally a gentleman, just a one of the kindest guys I've ever met. And in my early, a lot of people have heard me say this, in my early atheist days, uh, because of the way I was raised, I thought that atheists were just evil people. And when I, Jerry's one of those people I met and I thought, wow, this, this guy just totally bust the mold on Thank atheism you, Rich. here. Rich really is right. If you yeah. wanted, if you needed an ambassador for atheism, you really couldn't do worse than Jerry. I like that clip because Jerry interrupts Rich to say thank you, yeah. which is about the nicest <laughs> thing you can do. <laughs> this is a man who would not interrupt a dinner because of his heart attack. Because he, he's like, no, I got time. <laughs> this is somebody who still sends out birthday cards. I yeah. got my first birthday card since I was a kid. And it was from Jerry. Jerry knows my birthday. Yeah, he yeah. sends me a birthday card every year, too. Jerry, even when he gets a sense that you need volunteers for some sort of project you're working on, he will go out and come back with five people before you've even asked him, say, hey, these people want to help you. Yeah. This is the nicest guy that I've probably ever met in my life. Yeah. And, you know, I, you, people go, oh, the Dalai Lama is really nice. Oh, Desmond Tutu is really nice. You know, forget that noise. <laughs> I will put Jerry against any of those men. Now, does A.K. Adams try to figure, try to, you know, learn about Jerry? Does A.K. Adams... No. Uh, she already to... knows everything yeah, about Jerry. no. A.K. Adams already knows everything she needs to know about Jerry merely because of... He's his... not a Christian. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on Ask an Atheist. And this is her response. When you read God's Word and you see that God says to forgive, to forgive not only the people that you enjoy, but to forgive those who you don't enjoy, who are mean to you, you know that's not man's way. That's God's way. And I'm going to say this too. I'll probably get into trouble for this, but that's all right. Nice sweetness, loving kindness means you forgive. You forgive. It frees you and it frees the person who trespassed against you. It allows you to enjoy the blessings that God has for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How dare you? The enjoyment of religion is what caused Jerry's sibling to lose his leg. It enjoyed his leg right off. This, how do you yeah. 
how do you sleep at night? How do you look yourself in the mirror going, oh, well, that I'm just going to write off the horrible abuse that not once, not once in her tirade does yeah. she ever blame Jerry's father for beating his children so badly that one of them loses a leg. Yeah. Not once. Absolutely. And there's, there's just, you, you cannot say that sort of thing and come out of that and say you're a nice person. You can't claim to be moral when you act like this. This is not... This is not the kind response to atheism that you ex- that you think you're doing, A.K. Adams. This is this is just showing you're just explaining exactly why we're why we don't believe you, a- exactly why you cannot claim ever the moral high ground because you use your God to justify the worst things that humanity has to offer: genocide, murder, slavery. Yeah, that's okay as long as it's in the name of the Lord. No way, it stops now. And when you say things like this, when you blame the victim for the abuse that they suffer, you are firing a signal flare above your own ignorance, your own stupidity, your own bigotry. Yeah. And we're not going to have it. So you know what? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. You speak about us every week for two months, and we don't respond. You cross a line. This is what it feels like. This is what it feels like. You know what? We're going to return the favor to you just this once. Only when it's necessary. I don't really want to start. We're, we're not, actually, I won't say just me, but I'll say us. We don't want to start a tit-for-tat war with not, a show after ours. Well, no. She's welcome to have her opinion. We were happy when her show started up. But you got to keep it on the straight and narrow. You don't insult people. You don't You're, attack people. Yeah. You're free to say whatever you want on your show, but you don't get the freedom to say it without a response. Yeah. This is that response. Um, amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, that's all the time we've got. Uh, wow. <laughs> Your host today was Mike Gillis. Your co-hosts were Kyle Hepworth and Sam Mulvey. Your production assistant was Rebecca Friedman. Your call screener was Darren Garvin. Um, we're going to be in a better mood when we meet up at Dorky's at 5 p.m. At, Just a uh, little bit. Yeah, at I ninth, hope so. At 9th in Pacific. Uh, again, we have the comedy event coming up on December 29th, and we're going to be out there wrapping gifts. We will see you in an hour. <laughs>